Seems like it's been forever since we've had a Transformers movie on the big screen, but one came out like last year. I don't, I don't know. They, they come out and no one seems to care as much, even though they think they do okay at the box office. Anyway, here we are again with a brand new animated origin story for Optimus Prime called Transformers 1. But is it Transformers fun? I'm going to tell you right now in a spoiler-free review. Come on, let's roll out. Before I get into it, if you wouldn't mind transforming that subscribe button for me, it would be great. That means push it. Just, just hit it, select it, tap it, slay it, whatever you want to do so that you stick around for future movie reviews. I would appreciate it. Upon seeing the trailer for this movie, I thought it was an Optimus crime what they were doing with the property. It looked like Paw Patrol. It really did. It looked bad. It looked bad. But then I said, you know what, Adam? It's not for me. I'm a grown adult. I don't need to watch this. This is for little kids. This is for the bubble guppy fan base out there, and that's okay, let them have this. But then I started hearing stuff from fellow movie critics that this movie's actually good. They saw it early, of course, because they're better than me, but I, I let that go and I said, really? I think that you have terrible taste, but I'm gonna take your word on this one and go out and see this film, and I did. I have to tell you, it's good. It's not Pop Patrol X Transformers, no siree Bob. This is a gritty, dark, disturbing, well, it's not that either. But it is a good family flick that's got some dramatic moments, some stakes, some emotion that touches you to your very robotic core. This movie takes place entirely on Transformers Planet, aka Cybertron. A whole film on Cybertron, isn't that refreshing? No stupid humans, no Sam Witwicky running around going, Optimus! Bumblebee! No, 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 no! What I've done! I actually love that song. I love all the Linkin Park shit in Transformers. I wish they brought that back. There is no Linkin Park in the new Transformers, which is a shame. This movie's gonna follow a ragtag crew of plucky young Transformers. Orion Pax being the lead here. Voiced by Chris Hemsworth. Now, you might be saying, wait, it's on Orion Pax? I thought it was on Optimus Prime. <laughs> what the, what's going on here, Adam? I thought Chris Hemsworth was voicing Optimus Prime. Well, things will happen. Things are gonna go down, okay? His best friend is D-16, voiced by Brian Tyree Henry. Then there's Scarlett Johansson voicing Alita. And Keegan-Michael Key, of course, because he voices in every single animated film ever created, ever. He plays B-127, AKA Bumblebee, AKA Badassatron. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get back to what I just said in a second, but we also have the weirdest casting choice in this, Steve Buscemi as Starscream. And this is really going to be my only hang up in this entire film. Some of these voices just do not work for me. That said, as the movie and the story unfold, the voices will kind of fit better. They'll, they'll be manipulated, they'll twist and turn into something that's not quite what it was, but closer to what I remember. Kind of like Linkin Park. Orion and his buddy D-16 are like brothers forged in the mines below Cybertronia. <laughs> I don't know why I said Cybertronia. Cybertron. It sounded cooler. Cybertronia. They're not real brothers, but they, they feel like it. They're, they're just so bonded together because of the uh, obstacles they've overcome working down there. They have aspirations, of course. They have lofty dreams and goals like everyone else in the world, and they can't hit them, of course, because the weight of society has uh, crippled us altogether. You try to get out from under the rubble, but you can't. You know, you're out of breath. You, you reach out. Help me, please. Somebody just, just give me a hand up in life. And no one's there to answer. And eventually you just fade out like a dying star, hoping to return as something better, a new rebirth from the ashes, like a phoenix rising. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Sorry, I, I blacked out for a second. Oh yes, uh, the movie. They work down in the mines, clinking and clanking away to get that oh-so-precious energon. And cross this new divide. Dun, dun, skin, dun, dun, dun. Those park songs went hard in the Transformers films. Orion knows that they are more than meets the eye, though, and he's gonna find a way to excel 
and showcase his real talents as more than just a worker bot. Which means proving himself to Sentinel Prime, voiced by John Hamm. Sentinel Prime is the leader of Cybertron, he's the only Prime left. All the other OG Primes and uh, leaders have died over the years. They've come and gone, their sparks have fizzled out. As the story unfolds, Orion and D16 are going to uncover truths, they're going to reveal secrets, which is kind of the same thing as what I just said before. Very redundant here, I apologize. And they're going to learn lessons. And at the end of the day, what more could you ask for? <laughs> How about some action? How about some cool effects? How about a sweet soundtrack? How about this film has all of that? We get awesome transformation shots, slow motion. We get laser sword combat. We have large scale battles and we have small scale friendships. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm saying anymore. Uh, no, this is a good movie, is the bottom line. This was also heavily promoted as being a funnier film, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And in that department, it's, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I brought up earlier, and I am doing a callback right now, to Bad Acetron. Bumblebee says that, I think, four or five times. It's never funny once, in my opinion, and it certainly wasn't funny to the little kids behind me. One of the kids actually turned and said, stop swearing. <laughs> like, like Bumblebee could hear him, you stupid kid. He can't hear you. And to that point, I would just add, if you're thinking about taking the little ones, there is a little bit of profanity, okay? There is some vulgar language, some saltiness of sorts. Again, I'm repeating myself, kind of. Uh, outside of that joke, though, not really a whole lot more. Maybe there's a dam in the mix once in a while. But otherwise, pretty safe film to take the kids to. There isn't a lot of dark, disturbing stuff in the movie. There is some definite intense emotional moments, but nothing scary or... You know, like Optimus is going to rip the head off someone and drink the fluids inside. <laughs> You're dead, Megatron. <laughs> what I've done! <laughs> now to address the Optimus in the room, obviously Peter Cullen is not doing the voice this time. It is Hemsworth. Hemsworth was not too bad, actually, not too shabby. And again, as the film unfolds, he gets closer and closer to that Cullen charm. But obviously, it's not one-to-one. -one. It is different. It's just different. But this film is, all right? We, we, we have an off-Earth adventure on Cybertron. Transformers fighting Transformers. It's an origin story done in a unique, fun way. Uh, plot reveals are very obvious. I wouldn't say that that's earth-shattering stuff. You can kind of beat for beat guess most of this as it plays out. But it still plays out in a very satisfying, engaging way. And uh, it has a perfect pace to it. Never once does it slow down. And I'm, not, I'm never once bored of this film. I really enjoyed it. That, that's, that's the takeaway here. So let me know if you saw this movie or if you were worried it was going to be like a Paw Patrol film for younger audiences. It does a very good job marrying what Michael Bay did to what we had back in the freaking 80s with the cartoon to, you know, the, the old movie. It, there's, it just blends together very well in this, this cohesive, perfect harmony. So let me know your thoughts. Please like the video. Again, subscribe to the channel. I post new content every week. Would love to have you stick around. If you love what I'm doing, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Different tier levels different perks that come with them. I have a second channel that's much newer called Adam Does Rants, where I'm complaining up a storm about first world problems, hoping to make you laugh at my misery. And lastly, these are now going on Spotify, Apple Music, and other podcasting services in both audio and video form. So if you don't want to look at me, or if you prefer to listen or watch on Spotify, they should be there now. All right, if you excuse me, I got some park to listen to. We're building it up just to burn it back down.